What's up, everybody? It's uh, Gumum's back with another guide video. I just hit rank one, so I figured it's one of the best times to put out a guide. Today, I'm going to be ranking all the augments for silver, gold, and prismatic, but it's going to be part of like a three part series. So each tier is going to be a different video just because like it takes a really long time. Honestly, this video is going to be like helpful for pretty much every patch moving forward, unless they like drastically change any one of the augments. Obviously, in those cases, you, I'm going to have to like move them up and down the tier list depending on where they go. But yeah, so. I guess without a further ado, I'll just get right into it. Oh, for the most part, I would say like anything I put into D tier, you can just pretty much ignore as like never take. Obviously, if you're like a really good player, you'll know like the situations where you can take these augments. But if I'm putting in D tier, I'd say for like the 99% of people watching this video, it's better to just not take the augment under any circumstances. You'll probably be like safer off. Okay, I'm um, just going in alphabetical order, right? So AFK, I think is like solidly mid. Oh, also, I'll be trying to order them within the tiers as best as I can, but it's not always going to be so uh, easy. So yeah, AFK, I'm going to start with the in the B tier. It's like a pretty mid augment. Um, losing your first three shops in, on stage two is generally not worth it. This used to be a pretty broken augment back when it gave 20 gold. I don't know. It just makes it so that like pretty much there's a little bit of an augment power creep. So a lot of other augments kind of give like similar amounts of gold as well as this used to just give two more gold and your early shops probably used to matter less. But yeah, this is just like a solidly mid tier augment. This is probably like, I'd say low end of B, just decent, especially in the early game, but it's, it's also not that good. Uh, army building, also a B tier, probably mid tier B. Uh, oftentimes you want to be taking this on 3-2 just because like that one Nico immediately sometimes helps with, um, like say you have a pair of a three cost that you want to upgrade immediately. This is really good. And you'll get another one later on. And then so like if you end up re-rolling a three cost, say it's like Auction, uh, say it's like Lissandra, which are like some of the more meta ones, Karma in, in the current meta then it can be good later on. But most of the time, you really want to make use of that Nico like right when you get this. So if you get taken on 2-1, it's not that good. But on 3-2, it's pretty strong. 2-1, it still has its place. But generally, this is like a 3-2 augment. Balance budget, this is straight up garbage. Never take it. Ba uh, Bastion Heart. This is like pretty bad most of the time. But there are lines where you can play vertical Bastions and it's pretty good. Battle Ready is either like very bottom of A tier or top of B tier. It's kind of hard to say. I'll probably put it in the A tier for now and then move it down later based on, I guess, like what I see from the rest of these. Uh, Blood Money, easily S tier. This is probably like one of the best augments in the game. You just generate infinite gold. It doesn't even matter if you lose streak with it. Obviously, lose streak is like slightly more favorable, but if you have a win streak board, you can just play this augment. You still get a bunch of gold. Yeah, sure, you don't lose, you don't get gold like immediately, but if you're win streaking anyway, you're not gonna really have gold issues. And at some point in the game, you're gonna start losing HP and it's just gonna start paying off. This augment is just straight up broken. Probably gonna be at the top of S tier, like, or very close to the top of S tier. Uh, branching out, it's like a high A tier augment, but this augment, I would caution against, especially for like most players. It's like a little bit too hard to play for a lot of players because you have to like know so many different lines to be able to play this augment. It's really not worth probably taking in a lot of cases, especially if you're a newer player. So if you're not like really comfortable playing like pretty much everything, this augment's not gonna be that good. But in general, this augment is like just a really, really strong augment. Uh, bronze ticket, depending on the meta, this augment's pretty good. I would say like it's probably top to middle of B tier. It's like, it's okay. I don't know. Like it's generally good for real comps, especially low cost real comps, such as like in the current meta, it'd be Tristana. Obviously in old metas, you might see Kale. Other metas, you might see like uh, two cost rerolls, such as like Tilia, such as uh, Zed. But it's like a generally okay augment. It's not like crazy good, not crazy bad. Bruiser Heart's probably very low A. Just like Vertical Bruisers is like pretty good, especially next patch when they buff Rek'Sai, it's gonna be even stronger. Rek'Sai 3 is already playable and does really well with Bruiser plus one. And yeah, it gives a Vi. It lets you open like four Bruiser really, really quickly. Like if you have upgraded Rennington, upgraded Cho'Gath, you take this augment, you just have four Bruiser immediately, your frontline solved for pretty much most of the game. Obviously, Sejuani is like one of the premier tanks in the game right now. So late game, you could just play around like Sejuani and say you don't have a Zion, Zion yet, you got to get Bruiser for free. It's just a generically pretty good augment. Very Treasure, generically good. T probably just top of A tier. Don't, don't really need to talk about this too much. It's like just generically fine. Caretaker's ally. It says tier three champ. It got nerfed to tier two champ. This augment's straight up terrible. Don't ever take it. Challenger heart, probably like low B minus. Uh, the thing is six challengers aren't really meta right now, but this one's like pretty good. Uh, it lets you cut Samira on level seven and you can play like something more useful but it doesn't give you a spat. If it give you a spat, like obviously we'll talk about the gold augment at some point. It'd probably be a lot better, but like, yeah, I don't know. This augment's like pretty mid. If You could take it on like three, two, a decent amount of time or maybe four, two, but on two, one, I would probably shy away from this augment as much as I can. Component buffet, probably like low S tier. It's just a, it gives you a component, pretty much fixes your items throughout the game. It's really flexible because like, it's not letting you hard force a comp. It's letting you play towards the, any like spot you have. 
So say you have your your units are giving you a certain direction, component buffet will like pretty much let you continually kind of follow that direction. So like say it's like I don't know dead eyes. So you can just get a bunch of swords with this. It's really strong. If you need defensive components because you've already solved your offensive components, then obviously this augment's really strong. It's just like generically super good. I'd say like probably middle of S tier. Consistency probably like top of A tier, but like worse than buried treasure. Honestly, buried treasure might have to make it into S tier. We'll see. Consistency quite a hard augment to play. Generally, you want to lose streak with it because you can't guarantee win streaks most of the time. But it is a lot easier to guarantee loss streak. Like sometimes you'll have to full open. And then if you're full opening, you probably go for a level 6 or level 7 all in on 3 2 or 3 5. Generally pretty good. Put in corners, um, top of A tier, I guess. Like, I don't know. There's not too much to say about this augment. It's hard to kind of like really explain exactly what makes this good or bad. But it's just like a generically like probably mid augment cybernetic bulk is s tier there's not too much to say about this it's just really strong for a silver uh you're, you're getting like a little bit too much for being silver so it's just really good i'd say like middle of s tier cybernetic leech probably middle of a tier to top of a tier obviously if you have cybers like with different tiers or like even the same tiers you can't get two silver bulks but say you get like bulk then your next one ne any of your cybers on your next ones get like really really strong so uh, just keep in mind that synergy but yeah generically a really strong augment also pairs really well with augments that just give you items or portals that give you items so for example there's a lot of like item portals such as thresher sanctum extremist bazaar so stuff like those will make the cyber stronger so just like keep that in mind if you're picking these in your game dead eye heart is like i want to put it in a c tier because it really is a c tier augment but the thing is the dead eye comps the dead eye tree right now is really strong so i kind of want to put it higher but it's probably just a c tier augment this, this augment sucks but it has its place in the meta right now, so it's not that bad. Final grab bag. Okay, this is just, this is probably just ass, honestly. This is like a legend specific augment, so I don't even want to put it that high, but like, it is really, really strong. But I'll put it in A. It's a legend specific, so like, honestly, this won't even apply to most of you guys. It's like, whatever. Gotta go fast. This augment is actually pretty good, but I'm still gonna put it in C tier just because it's a legend specific augment. You're not gonna see it that often. And when you do, it's like very, very niche anyway, so whatever. Uh, Gunner Heart's really good. Probably top of B tier, especially in the current meta. It allows you to play 4 Gunner on 7 if you're playing around Gunners. And it allows you to drop the shit Gunners for the good Gunners. Obviously, once you have Senna, you could just play Senna, Jinx, Zeri. You could either play 2 Zon or 4 Zon. Just very flexible. Really good when it's good. So, yeah. Harm Assist. Oh, this one sucks. But it's just, like, not that bad. Pretty much, like, I'd say, like, low B is probably where I'd put all the generic augments that, like, do something but are not that good. Like, that's why you'll see, like, all natural here, Harm Assist here. Like, they do something, but they're not that good, I guess. But they're pretty good. Uh, healing orbs, same thing. I'd put it, like, middle of B somewhere. Inconsistency is a top-tier augment. One of the best augments in the game. This is actually, <laughs> interesting enough, the most powerful part about this augment is the fact that it fixes your mental. Like, if you... It doesn't even matter if you streak. Like, sometimes when you, you get your streak broken on stage 2, you're just so sad that you can't even play the game anymore. This makes it so that you don't have to be sad and you just gain too much gold, so it's really broken. Indomitable Will, okay, this augment is straight up horrible early game, but it's really strong late game. I want to put it, like, top of A tier, because, like, the high end of this augment is so, so strong. Shedding all negative effects means you actually shed anti-heal. There are cases where, if your units are really reliant on anti-heal, you shed the anti-heal, uh, the enemy team can't even play the game anymore, because they, they run out of anti-heal. So, like, sometimes, like, people are just running a Morello on, like, say, Alessandra, it casts once, but once you shed it, like, it... Well, it's not just not casting a second time, so in, in a lot of fights, so like it's just really strong. But you just gotta keep in mind that like this augment is really bad in the early game, so yeah. Um, Invoker Heart, it's pretty good for the Invoker comp. Um, it's really bad as a generic augment. Don't take this as like, oh, I get two Invoker. Like, no, you, no, I mean, it's just bad if you do that. But in the six Invoker line, it's actually pretty good because it allows you to roll on seven a lot easier, uh, which is really strong. Iron Asset, probably low B, same thing as Harmacist, right? It's never bad, it easily can be the best of your bad options. So I would definitely consider taking this augment every once in a while, but it's not that good. Pace to learn is probably top of B. It just smooths out your curve if you're. It's once again it's a legend specific augment, so you're only getting this if you're playing Asol. I think um, it's pretty good. It smooths out your curve a little bit, but it's like also kind of whatever. Item grab bag. I believe this is also legend specific, but it's actually really quite good. I'd just probably put it at like top of A. Most pretty much most items you'll get are always going to be pretty good. Jewel lotus top of A tier, but not even like very top of A tier. Definitely worse than all of those, so I'd probably just put it here. It's got nerfed. Before the nerf, it was S tier for sure. Probably low S tier, maybe mid S tier. But after the nerfs, it's not that good, so pretty good place to put it at. Job's done, low A tier. This is the 4-2 Orn Augment, uh, Orn Legend Augment. It's pretty good, but it's like, pretty much once again at like stage 4, you generally aren't looking for items most of the time, but if you are looking for items, it's really good. Sometimes, especially if it's silver, right, there's not that many combat silvers. 
So even if you're not looking for items on 4-2, like it's still going to be pretty good. So yeah, I just put this like generally pretty good. Juggernaut Heart. This one's hard to rank because like Vertical Juggernaut's actually pretty good and underrated. But because it's so underrated and so underplayed, it's hard to judge exactly how good it is. Like I haven't run into it. Or I don't think I've personally ever taken it. But I actually think this one has potential. So I want to put it like low B tier. But I don't know. I can't bring myself to really put it low B tier. So I'm probably just going to put this one in C tier. A knowledge download. Don't do this. This is straight, this is straight garbage augment. Like game specialist, straight up broken. This is like one of those ones where, like, if you're just gonna look at this picture at the end of the video, you're not gonna understand exactly why this is S tier. Like, this is either S tier or it's D tier, right? Depending on your spot, this is like really, really broken. If you can actually make use of it healthily and get to nine and fit, make a level nine board, this augment is like so, so strong. But if you take it and you can never make it to nine, you're literally down your silver. It's worse than literally all these augments because it, it does less than just all these augments, I guess, because these augments at least do something. But like, obviously this augment is conditional and a lot of times you can't actually meet that condition. So just be careful with this augment. Um, if your spot is good for it, it's literally S++ plus plus plus, as in it's the best augment in the game for silvers. But if you can't, then it's pretty bad. Latent Forge, uh, generally just like a really solid augment. It's uh, Orn 2-1. Probably just middle of a uh, cybernetics, probably worse than that. It's something along those these lines makes sense to me. Uh, medium and shopping, same thing as late game specialist. These two pretty much go hand in hand. They're the exact same idea. I think middle, medium and shopping is probably lower lower cap, but um more generic. It's uh really strong. So same thing as late game specialist. If your spot for it is good, it's just broken as hell. Missing connections, bottom of a tier. You should actually like consider this augment more. There's like a, a chart somewhere. I maybe I can link it in the description below uh, for this augment where it shows like which champions in each uh, ball because it's the same thing every time. This augment is like slowly underrated, so keep a look out for it. It's also especially good for like certain one cost people, like for example, um, Tristana. Oftentimes you'll find yourself like one off of each. This can like hit help you hit three of your rerolls like all in one turn, which is actually like really strong. And it's also like 13 gold base, so it's actually like pretty good there. Also, like if you're playing around a one cost board in general, say you need a couple upgrades, this is like somewhat reasonable, but for the most part, it's like not that good for that. Uh, money, money, straight up garbage, on a roll, top of B. This augment's like pretty hard to play. It's one of the harder augments in the game to play. It's not obvious whether or not you should like be rolling on level three, level four, just to be hitting those uh, two free rolls per turn. Like in my opinion, you should, but it's not, it's really not obvious. Like mathematically, I don't know if it works out to be uh, positive gold if you do that so this augment's hard i mean it's only really good for like one cost reroll so like right now once again that's tristana mostly but I i'd say it's really quite good it's definitely better than a lot of the other reroll augments so i'd say top of b is like pretty fair maybe low a but once again it's a little bit too hard for me to confidently put it like in like really top tier a one two three i've never taken this augment game one two one two one two two okay this is probably just straight garbage like i, I mean i've read this augment before it, 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 i mean it's not like top of d but like who 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 really cares i mean this augment is all right anyways okay this is a uh, stage four two augment it's like c tier straight up a gamble augment it's not horrible um if you compare this one to like jobs done which gives you two component anvils it's like actually close enough because it gives you baseline seven gold. I should, uh, no, this can't be that bad. This actually can't be that bad. But it's like too much of a gamble for me to take it. But especially if you're trying to have some fun, it's pretty good. And even if you're not trying to have some fun, it's like pretty good. So I actually wouldn't sleep on this argument that much, especially if you hit your gamble, then like this becomes like a really strong argument, right? Like, so you hit like a Heimerdinger on seven, a Scion on seven, uh, Ari with items on seven. Like there's just so many things you can hit that's actually like pretty good. But you just have to recognize all your outs when you take this augment. So yeah, just be careful with this one, I guess. Pandora's Bench. I think this augment is hot garbage, but it's definitely not D tier. I, I want to put this in D tier so bad, but it's not D tier. It's like top of C. It's like, it's too much of a gamble augment. I, I hate the pure gamble augments. I don't think they're worth it. I know this one's like kind of a pure gamble augment technically, but it's like a little bit too broken. This one is like, I know some people would probably just put this in A tier, maybe even in S tier, but like, I don't see it. Pandora's Items. This is pretty bad. I know bad players are going to be like, holy crap, this augment is so good. And even some of like the higher end players kind of like really like this augment, but I don't believe in this augment at all. I think most of the time it's baiting you into doing something you don't want to do. This is another legend augment. Pretty good actually. Just because it's silver, you're not paying much to get it. And when it does make the fight difference, pretty much when it does matter, this augment is really strong. But like the thing is a lot of times it doesn't matter, which means like the augment doesn't do anything. But once again, since you're paying a silver to get it, it's like pretty good. I, I have to put this like middle B. I personally never taken this just because I don't play the legends that give you this. I believe Vlad and Vagar are the two that give you this I, off the top of my head. I, I don't really know, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's probably worse than this. That means this is probably better than those. Uh, yeah, this looks right to me. Uh, pumping up, this one's like pretty bad. But like not untakeable. This is pretty good, I guess. I think like current meta, it's actually a lot better. 
because there's like certain cogs that abuse it but like in general i think this is like a pretty weak augment uh recon bob papa bay this augment's like really broken but once again this augment is like one of the hardest ones to learn to understand how to do because like you need to know how to play around every unit in the game get the maximum value out of this augment right because fundamentally it's just an rng augment but because of how powerful it can potentially be and because like even though it's an RNG augment, if you're good at like making the best out of like a bad scenario, this augment's just like, just like so strong. I've taken it in tournament probably more than any other player in TFT history, and I still stand by this augment. I haven't taken it much this set, if at all, but I do believe in this augment just fundamentally is really strong. A red buff, S tier, oh, just really strong. I mean, it doesn't even matter if you're playing AD or AP. If you generally just need anti-heal, which a lot of comps do, which I mean, every comp in some way, shape or form kind of wants, this is just really strong. It's not like always broken, but it's just so generically good that it's probably either S or like top A. I, I want to put top of A. It's probably not quite strong enough to be S anymore after the nerfs, but it is really strong. Risky Rose. I mean, this is an easy S tier. Uh, arguably, arguably the best silver in the game, honestly. Definitely up there as one of the best silvers in the game. It's worse than Inconsistency. Inconsistency is also better than Blood Money probably as well. I like probably like this. It's like hard to like rank them because like some of them, obviously like Augments in general, like TFT in general is like a situational game. So given the situation where this is the best, it's like, anyways, whatever. Rogue Heart, uh, D tier, don't even have to talk about that one. Rolling for days, bottom of C, top of D. It's not top of D because there are cases where you can take this. It's really bad though. Uh, seeing double, this is just, I don't even have to talk about that. Shadow Isle Heart, top of C, I want to say. It's pretty good. Uh, no, it's definitely not C. It's like probably like here actually uh it's pretty good because six shadow isle is really strong if you pair this with another shadow isle plus one it's like really really strong but if you don't then it's like pretty weak because you really want that emblem shadow isle emblem is what makes it good right because you can actually like make a unit a shadow isle which is just a really really strong trait to give a unit but yeah in general this augment is pretty okay silver spoon for me personally i like bottom of s but i'm like a win streak player and this is really good for win streak do note that this messes up your leveling intervals. So if you're used to like the standard leveling intervals, this like messes it up. I mean, you just have to like understand that it messes it up and play around it. It's like, it's not that hard, honestly. Just generally pretty good. It lets you like accelerate tempo really early on. If you have upgrades already, uh, this is really strong. But if you don't have upgrades, it's really bad. Hopefully that makes sense because like if you upgrade, sorry, if you're leveling, if you're jamming levels early, it's a lot harder to reach your upgrades because it messes with the odds of your units, right? And then obviously in the early game, you want odds for low cost units more than you want odds for high cost units, unless like you hit a really specific high cost unit that's really strong. So yeah, a Slayer, Heart, is pretty good. Uh, just like probably where all the other hearts are. Probably better. Um, currently it's probably not better, but in general, I want to say this is like a really strong augment. It's even upwards of like high B, low A, or even like upwards of S tier if the Slayer comps are strong, but currently they're just not. I'd say generally if the game is balanced, this looks like a B tier augment to me. So this is where I'm going to leave it. Um, small Forge, this shit is, or this thing is really broken. Yeah, Small Forge, probably top of A, easily. May, ah, yeah, no, it's bottom of S, right? It just has to be. This augment is so good. It's 3-2 Orn. I don't know what else it is. I think there's another legend that might have it. This thing is so good. I mean, I take it so often. I'm an Orn player. It's really good. Social, social Distancing, one of the strongest uh, combat silvers in the game. It's really good. Sword card is really good right now. Probably going to be really good moving on from the set forward so i have to put this like middle of a probably just because it allows you to play eight sork on seven if you have a plus one or if you hit re which is so broken and then i'll like pretty much at every stage in the game this augment can be really powerful if you're playing vertical sorks so like unlike the other augments that like oh at this stage in the game it's good or like in this scenario it's good it's like this augment can actually be good at every stage in the game if you're playing sorks just because of how sorks works it's like a two four eight the cost structure of the entire trait just lends itself to being really good with sword card. So, uh, Spoils of War, easy S. It's generally only good if you have like a strong board already, but even if you don't, it's like still pretty good. It, I don't know, this is just like worth a lot. It's really good, but I, I wanna put it on A tier. Okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. And then I wanna move this around because Buried Treasure is, okay. I like this probably. Okay, Tiny Grab Bag. Uh, after the nurse, this sucks, right? Tiny power is broken as hell. Um, it's a legend specific augment to Vagar. I mean, I don't know, it's just broken, right? There's not too much to say. Tiny Titans, terrible on 2-1, but broken on 3-2. Once again, if you're going to look at this picture without like the context, you're not gonna understand that, but I will probably put this in like high A tier. Do not take this one on 2-1, unless you're like tilt over already, or like you're like hard loose streaking already for some reason, I don't know. What would make you want a hard loose streak on 2-1? Like, guaranteed. Because, like, you never know what your shops are going to be. Like, there are cases where this is good. But, like, so broken on 3-2, I have to put it on top of A. Uh, training reward, oof. Mid, low B. It's pretty good. 
I mean, this one's pretty good. It's like a probably a better version of army building. So it has to go above army building, but it's also a legend specific. So it's like hard to say. Cause the thing with army building is that you generally just want one dupe when you take this most of the time. And it gives you two and it gives you seven less gold. The thing is that seven gold probably balloons up to like 10 gold at least. By the time army building gives you a second dupe, that 10 gold can be used to level one stuff. It's really good. Uh, Transfusion is straight garbage at one, but it has its place. So it's pretty good. Uh, unburdened one low a tier probably i don't know it's like pretty good but it's not like before the nurse this augment used to be so broken but whatever got nerfed unified easy s easy easy like easy easy s it's just like generically a really good combat augment you could it got nerfed it's not 20 it's 18 but you could just read as like your entire team gains 18 armor and mr which is so so strong mid s i'd say it's like this is like the gateway to s plus so like these are like s's just because they're like too situational to be s plus but these are not even situational. They're just broken. Well earned comforts. This is another legend specific augment. Technically speaking, this is a D because you would never play the, the legends that use this, but it's actually pretty good. So I, I would put it in like mid B tier. I don't know, somewhere. It's probably worse than healing orbs. It's probably better than partial. It's worse than this. Partial is probably like here or then. Yeah, this looks good to me. Young Wild and Free. Oh, this augment is so broken now. S tier uh, after the bus. It's only S tier on 3 2 if you're wind streaking. Once again, like another super situational augment. You can think about this like kind of like Licking Specialist, which is like in the situations where you take this, it's so, so broken. Otherwise it's like really mid. Never take this on 2-1 unless you're, I've taken it once on 2-1 and that's because I knew I was gonna be high HP. But like, if you don't know, especially for like less experienced players, it's not gonna be that good. But yeah, this is really strong. Uh, Zahn, this is literally my favorite augment, favorite silver in the game, but it's so bad because it's a straight up gamble augment. Uh, six on is really broken right now it might get nerfed soon i don't think it's getting nerfed in the next patch but it's gonna get nerfed soon it's, it's better than all of these it's probably better than gunner too but like this is a gamble dog man it's it's so dependent on if your zon is good and you literally can't know that they're good until you have like four to six on probably four zon you need to know you need to see before you have this so it's really good on four two terrible on two one and pretty good on three two okay it's probably low a actually i mean maybe, maybe this is just actually my bias speaking but like dude i really like this augment i don't know um yeah it's pretty good and yeah i mean that's probably the video just for like silver um you're probably gonna see a screenshot here might leave it in the link in the description below just so like you can look at it in your own games i ordered it to the best of my abilities from left to right like is this the best silver album in the game probably i mean is this like one of the best probably all these are so good i'm happy with like the order at which i have it okay social distancing is definitely worse than tiny power and tiny power is definitely like broken as hell okay Probably like something like this. Yeah, hopefully I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for this picture. Uh, look out for my next videos coming out for the gold and prismatic versions of this tier list. I think it's gonna be really helpful. Obviously they removed the stats. So I don't know, you can't just like look at the stats anymore. Realistically speaking, most players won't be able to just look at this given they're like 2-1 or 3-2 or 4-2 choice, especially without actually watching the video, but we'll see. Use this to your own discretion. It's gonna be helpful. Just use it as like more of a guide more than like an end all be all. So peace.